now for the Town Talker with Reverend Zechariah A. Jackson. Reverend Jackson is founding pastor of Church of What's Happening Now, located in Plainfield, New Jersey. And now, the Town Talker, Reverend Zechariah Jackson. Oh, it's good coming to you. This is the Reverend Zachariah A. Jackson from the Church of What's Happening Now on Town Talker Talk Show. I tell you, we have a lot to talk about today, you know. I don't know what's going on with them Democrats in New York and yes. with all that's going on. I, I often wonder, are you insecure in being a Democrat? Because you keep referring to being a Republican or putting a Republican in your place. This is a, you know, and I've been a Democrat all my life and, mm -hmm. you know, a deeply rooted. You know what I mean? And a lot of people say, well, you know, my family years ago was Republican. Yeah, well, mine was, too, when they were, that was all they knew to be. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and maybe at that time, the Democrat was on one side, but, well, you know, and the Republicans on another side. Well, now, I don't um, dispute the history, mm -hmm. but I have never seen a bunch of politicians conduct themselves like they're doing in New York, and not only New York, all around the, all around the uh, country. Yes. You know, and... Um, I noticed that um, that Rush Limbaugh you keep talking about um, Obama. He said that Obama said he inherited the problem. He said Obama didn't inherit the problem, that Obama caused the problem, the money problem. Mm. Let's just get deep, deep about it. No. The money problem. He caused the money problem. Now, I mean, now, come on now. I'm not a rocket scientist. Not that we need any rockets today for anything. You understand? What we need is peace and mighty God to, to heal the whole world. Yes. But I tell you one thing, I wasn't too good at math. Most of my tests, I pass on my knee because I look down there for the answer. But I'm going to tell you this right here now. One and one is two. Now, we know that uh, Mr. Bush that left office, you know, he didn't leave with a clean, clean economic slate. Sure did. I got a call the other day from Michael. I believe it was Michael Reagan uh, campaigning something about helping and doing something special for George Bush and things of that nature. And wonder how did I feel? And I said, well... It's not my uh, 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 way of doing things to actually condemn a president. You know, I don't That's go right. deep down and, you know, the president of the United States, you know, I have some re I respect whether it's my party or not. I went to Ronald Reagan uh, funeral and I'd never voted for a Republican, never came close to voting for a Republican for president. Right. Okay. And then he's talking about donating some money. Now, that's when I, I had to, you know, put on put on the parachute. I said, well, I can't. You know, no, I'm not going to donate no money to, right. to George Bush to celebrate whatever y'all trying to put together because Mr. Bush already got his, um, you know, his, his due, his, his economic due. That's A right. good pension coming. You know, okay. I remember when Bill Clinton signed that pension, the extra pension for the uh, uh, retired president. So I'm sure that he don't need to be worried about the economy and whether the gas done went up a dollar. Because right. the gas is now is up one more dollar, you know. Mm -hmm. I'm paying uh, two thirty seven instead of one thirty seven. So I'm feeling it a little bit. I don't think that, uh, and I don't mean no harm against the president, the ex-president, but I don't think that I feel that he feel what I feel in the gas thing. You know no, he doesn't. I don't think at the end of the month he had to balance his bill like I do. That's right. I don't think so. So, you know, we got a whole lot to talk about, you know, and of course... We have again Obama gay cover up. They call the president gay again. Uh, 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 they say Michelle is uh, uh, in silence and she's uh, uh, telling Obama's lover to hands off. You know what I'm saying? I mean, hands off. This guy, <laughs> you know, I mean, come on. I mean, you know, this is the global, you know, it's the global. The, the thing is, is that I'm trying to get some headwind with this guy, Larry St. Clair, because he said he wrote, a, he's uh, put out some kind of book about um, Obama and this uh, supposed to be lover, whatever the case may be. And so we're going to try to get him on the show and just talk to him anyway, because one thing about Town Talk talk Show, that what we try to do, we try to bring you in. Yes. And it's very important to, to actually bring people in to get their views so the country and uh, the community and the country can know exactly what's going on. We don't need to have no secrets today. I, uh, um friend of mine come to me a few years ago and asked me that I want to be a part of this certain club. And I said, well, you know, it's full of secrets. I'm not going to call it a club. And I said, you know, my grandfather was part of that club. Yes, I, I know said, what club I understand talking about, about whatever club you may think right. it is. I mm -hmm. said, my granddaddy and grandma was part of that club. I said, but you know what? He said, what's that? I said, I'm, uh, 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 I don't want no more secrets. That's right. Put it on the table. That's right. Put the pattern. chicken right there on the table, you understand me? And let's cut it up and put some hot sauce on it and some uh, 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 watermelon call of the day. That's right. Let's cut the, you know, the jig is up. <laughs> the jig is up. All these old secrets and everything. So, you know, this man, uh, Elias Sinclair, claimed that he's writing a book, so I'm going to try to reach out to him and, uh, 
And uh, if he hears, uh, call I call the Town Talker Talk Show so we can bring you in, you know what I mean, and, 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 and see what you got and everything. And maybe we get the president call in and finally bring this thing to a rest. At the Holocaust Museum, and you know, um, it's a shame, too, that this old cat by the name of uh, James Von Byrne, I believe it is, B-R-U-N-N, -B -R -N, I can't pronounce the last name correctly, you know, 88 years old, white supremacist, coolly strolled into the Holocaust Museum in Washington, armed with a rifle yesterday and beginning a wild shootout that left a security guard dead. Now, I was just at the Smithsonian, and I believe that the Holocaust Museum is part of the Smithsonian Museum. Yes, People Washington. think that Smithsonian is just one museum. It's a collection of museums. Yes. I spent a whole day down there uh, at the Aerospace Museum, mm -hmm. and then I looked for the African American Museum, couldn't find that, so I wound up going to the Native American Museum. Oh, okay. Had lunch there, had a big... Uh, buffalo burger. I have, I've got two buffalo burgers, so you understand me? If I go out there, you know, if you try to wrestle a horse, just understand that's what it is. But the idea is that, you know, um, and, and not against the Native American, but just against yes. the buffalo. You understand? Mm -hmm. We've got to make things clear. Make right. things yes, clear. You, you know, we don't hurt nobody's feelings. Hurt nobody's yes, feelings. Right. And, you know, this guy, he strolled into the museum, the Holocaust Museum, and just started firing. Now, when I went to the museum, they searched us as we walked in. You know what I mean? You go in, you got to surrender your your uh, uh, your belongings. I had a big bag and cameras and stuff like this. I surrendered and everything. You know, but it's just a shame that this thing here happened and that he's 88 years old. I guess he didn't mind uh, uh, going to glory or wherever he was going. You uh -huh. know what I mean? At that age, I guess he was calling in and he's going to do a final, final. You know, and that's what we have to be very careful about. That, you know, you have a lot of people out here that have been bred it and they want to do a final, final. You know, they don't mind going. You yes, understand me? Yes. They, you know, they, they feel that their journey on life is finished, so they're going to do a final, final and try to take you out with them, you know. Mm. So it's just a shame that yes, um, it is. these things go down and everything. And uh, uh, God be with those that was slain in the, in the, in the madness that that happened. Amen. Oh, you know, it's just a shame that, that this stuff here is going across in the country, you know, and I, that's why we had to prepare our kids because I was talking to a, a young man, a, 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 a young a man not too long ago, and he was talking about the, the economy, and then he started coming into with a socialist order. I said, well, now, wait a minute now. You you know, you want to talk about socialist order because we have little problems today. You understand? Mm -hmm. This thing been working real good. Ain't that VCR cheaper than it used to be? Remember, yes, remember it is. $1,000, now you can get it for 39 cents at Walmart? Come on now. You know? So let's, 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 let's keep it real, you know. So now, you know, now you're ready to go that way. You know what I mean? Let, let's try to straighten this up, you know. And one thing, we're going to have to stop being people that's ready to jump. That's and ready right. to run. But he didn't know I knew where he was coming from. I said, wait a minute, I know the order that you're coming from. You understand me? We never had a conversation again, so I guess he was trying to take me into some kind of socialist thing, but I kind of uh, nipped that right in the butt. Yes. So today we have guests, you know, and um, I want you to introduce yourself. You're back here, and, and, and what are you going to tell us, you know? Go ahead, introduce yourself. Okay, I'm Delmarie Sanderson. I was on the show the... Uh, the 14th, I believe it was the 14th. 14th. The 14th of May. Okay, the 14th of May. And, <laughs> and I'm back again to um, for part number two to talk more. And you're talking more about a man that's coming from the homosexual world into the heterosexual world. Yes. Okay. All right. And uh, you can introduce yourself, huh? Yes. My name is Elder Denise Clark. I'm from New Vision Ministries. Um, I come to introduce um, Angel Food Ministries. It's an excellent food ministry, and um, we have different food packages, and feel free to give me a call at 973-634-8267. Okay, and you have a friend with you? Hi, and my name is Rosalind, I'm from Ohio, and I'm here visiting, and my ministry is uh, Truth Encounters. Okay, all right, now, and, and what are you going to talk about today? I'm going to talk about what uh, uh, Delmar is going to talk about, the part two of uh, coming out of uh, homosexuality. Okay, okay. Now, Delmar, what's, what's going on with you right now at this stage of the game? Where are you at? But, you know, what, what's actually going on? Uh -huh. I know last, last time you were here, you talked, but we, you know, but under the cover of the Bible, and there's nothing wrong with that, but we want you to be a little bit more clear for the public. So where are you, where are you at now? With this, are you... Uh, uh, in terms of your relationship, are you guys still going ahead, or you where you at? Uh, with that, um, well, you're talking about my relationship with my um, girlfriend, who's now my ex-girlfriend. Um, due to 
issues with the family as well as um, with with her. Okay. And that's the reason why I did it. Now, before you said you didn't have no issues with your family. Yeah. Now, well, I still don't. I still don't. So you, that you didn't know, have no issues about her. No, I don't have any issues about the family, but it's the way that things with the family was being handled. About you? Yeah. So they wasn't as, as uh, clear about what you were saying. Yeah. And that's okay because you just, you know, first making your approach at this time. You know what I mean? I, I even said, remember, I, I, I brought it up. I said, well, you know, is this your first, you know, person that you're going out with? You know what I mean? And things of that nature. And so you're saying that they have not made that transition and, and they yeah. didn't give you the blessings that you need. Yeah. Well, I believe that you need blessings in whatever you do. I would never marry. I, years ago when um, I was scheduled to get married mm -hmm. uh, a few times in um uh, a lot of the women that I was dating was uh, Ivy League girls, and they thought the parents thought that they could do better. Because I, I would, you know, what I would do, I would talk to the girl about marriage, but then I wanted her family approval, mm -hmm. you know. So I would go around like Moses, you know. I asked him, I said, you know, what are you thinking? And, you know, and that little little mumble, I said, well, you know, they probably want a rocket sign. Well, is that what you want? Yeah, they, well, you good, better go ahead and go get them, you know what I mean? And I, would, I wouldn't go forth. I wouldn't go forth. Even though they wanted to go, mm -hmm. they wanted to do it because one thing I know about marriage is a life journey. Mm -hmm. You know, my mother father married 45 years, you know what I mean? Father died 20 years, uh, 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 what about, it was 30 years into the wedding, and uh, into the marriage when father died, and my mother kept counting. Mm -hmm. I went to see her, and uh, when she was sick, she said, you know, today my anniversary. I said, is that right? She said, me and your father been married 45 years. I said, wow. daddy died 20 years ago. She still kept counting. You know? <laughs> People don't do that no more, and it's all right. Because right. the world has changed. The world has changed. So, you know, so you... Um, uh, you guys are good with where you yeah, at? Yeah, we're we're good. Where we're at. We're still brothers and sisters in Christ. That doesn't stop me from loving her as a brother, as a sister in Christ. Right. So you know, we still talk mm -hmm. um, to one another. Mm -hmm. um, I still respect her, respect her family because, sure. um, in the essence of it all, we're still all one family in Christ. Okay. Okay. And what you want to add to that, right there? Go ahead. Well, I came out of the lifestyle a long time ago, and uh, ahead, since you. I uh, gave my life over to Christ. I've uh, been living a, a, a regular life, and I date men, you know, and uh, th thoughts don't even come, go back to uh, getting involved with women. Um, it's a big change uh, in my life, and Jesus Christ is the one that allowed me to make that change, you know, and so I, I have not had, um, I don't even think about it. Okay. You know, it, it's no longer a part of my life at all. And you have truly evolved from it. Yes, I have. Yes, okay. I have. And, and, and uh, how could you be or have you been a motivator towards those that might trip and may think that that's the way that they would go for themselves? Ago? For everyone, it's different. Okay. You know, uh, a lot of people got involved in it uh, because of traumas and sure. uh, abuses that they, you know, went through as children. Mm -hmm. Other people uh, felt like they were born mm -hmm. that way. And it's a... Uh, but, you know, it's, uh, it, that's something that you have to deal with with God. Sure. You have to go to him and you have to ask him constantly to help you through it. Because whatever it is that you're dealing with in your life, God has the power sure. to bring you out of it. But let me ask you this right here. I'm a man of God and truth. Uh, I believe in God and everything uh, uh, that I have received and everything I do come through God. But let me ask you this right here. Do you think that if we taught... Uh, in the families, if we taught more about sex education in an earlier age, that perhaps that this wouldn't uh, come up in, in, uh, with, with a lot of our young people. Because, you know, I learned about sex secretly from a, from a book. I found a, some kind of little, I found a, I don't know where it was. I never forget, I found a, 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 a what do you call that?